Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your processes, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And today we're going to be joined by Andre from Project Huddle. And we're going to be talking about how we like to strangle clients. I mean, get feedback from clients on websites. But before we dive in, let me first say hello to my good buddy and co-host, Matt Siebert. Matt Siebert from Paria Strategic Design. How's it going today, Matt? Yeah, it's going well. And uh, yeah, you might notice that uh, the name has changed. I'm starting to, uh, to push things towards the uh, the new identity, uh, Paria, rather than the Matthew Siebert Design, um, for many different reasons. But uh, it's working out really well so far. So. Well, I stumbled on your name, which hasn't changed, and then nailed the company name. So <laughs> I at least got it half right. Yeah, it happens. So I've been uh, chatting with Andre quite a bit here recently, uh, working out all my own systems on how I've integrated Project Huddle into my starter sites, how I'm dealing with clients, how I'm using it with white label clients and their customers, uh, and also uh, going back and forth with Matt, as Matt does not use a feedback tool on his website projects yet. yet. Uh, so we've been doing all that and I thought this would be a good time to uh, introduce Project Huddle to any of those of you out there who haven't checked out, talk a little bit about my experience with it, all of our experience with client feedback and see what kind of things we can figure out. So good morning, Andre. How's it going this morning? Excellent. Thanks for asking. We're glad to have you here. So for those of uh, those of you in the audience who aren't familiar with Andre, why don't you give us a little bit of your backstory? Tell us kind of how you uh, ended up making this amazing tool. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that this morning. When was the first time I ever got feedback on something? And I actually majored in art in, um, here in Madison. And uh, it was really interesting going to art school because you would get sort of like really candid feedback that you weren't used to. I don't know if you ever took art classes in high school or anything, but like we had professors that would make people cry with feedback just because they weren't so used to it. And it got me thinking like feedback is so personal and, yeah. and you really need thick skin to do it. Um, and the difference between that and sort of, I guess to go forward a little bit, um, ended up getting a job at an agency and, and working with clients there uh, and getting fired from that agency and going off my own as a freelancer um, and ended up sort of on the other end of the spectrum with feedback where somebody that really does not know how to give good feedback and you sort of have to distill it and kind of ask more questions and figure out exactly what they're referring to. But in both cases, man, it's like it's feedback, I think can be like almost soul crushing in a way. You spend all this time, effort, your your entire life and expertise goes into something and and somebody gives you feedback and you're like, what what are you even talking about? Like what did this does this person even know what they're talking about? So Yeah, and I think that's like the the major like hurdle for a lot of people. Um, probably the majority out there is just how like you know, you, you pour blood, sweat, and tears into a project and you, you feedback can hurt. Um, however, you know, the first time I contacted Kyle all those uh, those years ago. Um, one of the first things that he said was actually, don't worry about, uh, giving me feedback because I don't care. <laughs> like, I it's don't not going to hurt my feelings, which is yeah. awesome. But I do think that that's one of those, uh, those like, you know, exceptions that prove the rule. Yeah. So I think the difference is here. And I noticed when you were talking about this, Andre, you went to art school. I didn't, I didn't go to art school. I went straight from high school into a job where design was just part of it and kind of learned that way. But you know, with art, it's very much an emotional connection to what you're creating, you know, so you're expressing yourself in some sort of way. And what we do a lot of times as web designers, web developers are back, even when I was doing print design, you know, it's more, it, it's, it's less self-expressive and it's just more of a business transaction, you know? So uh, I, I've said that to a lot of clients. What I told Matt is uh, don't worry about hurting my feelings because I think sometimes, and especially people like Matt, who is also a designer would maybe feel a little bit awkward about making a critique. I spent 15 years working in a retail environment designing for people who knew nothing about design. So their feedback they gave me was always terrible. It made no sense. Uh, but they were paying the bills and I just had to go along with it. So I've developed like the thickest of skins uh, on that kind of feedback. It doesn't bother me a bit. Yeah, I say the same thing to my clients. Like, you know, it's not going to hurt my feelings. Like, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's 
whatever I'm building is, is supposed to be something that helps you, you know, like you don't have to necessarily like it, but whatever is built is built to, you know, the specifications of some sort. Um, and it's kind of amazing how many clients like hear that and they're like, Oh wow, that's, that's really great because in the past they've dealt with, uh, designers who don't take criticism very well. Yeah. See, I won't get mad, but I will come into the admin bar group and bitch about it. <laughs> like I would definitely do that. So, uh, when you, when you, uh, left an agency and went out on your own, what were you doing through, through your own agency? What kind of work were you doing? Yeah. So I was an art director for a small agency, um, here in Madison and they're getting fired and, um, kind of suddenly and had to go off on my own, which is absolutely terrifying if it's ever happened to anybody. Um, and sort of had to build my freelance career, like, like as fast as I could on the fly, just to be able to eat kind of thing. Um, so almost all my experience has been as a freelancer running a small agency. Um, and so when I would get feedback from people, I would use all these tools, but it seemed like a lot of them were built for larger agencies or, you know, cause they were either expensive or like had all these project management features that I was supposed to use with like my entire Just team. Super corporate. excessive. Yeah, it's exactly. Super excessive, super complicated for clients to use. So mm -hmm. um, that's sort of when I started creating Project Huddle on the side. I, I wanted to build something that worked for me. And, um, and more importantly, you know, all these other tools I tried to use to organize feedback, organize projects, like clients would just not use. It was just an additional barrier and they just, it would fall off. So I need to make something a lot simpler. And that's sort of how Project Huddle got its start. You know, that story kind of reminds me a lot about uh, when we've had Laura Elizabeth on the show who made uh, Client Portal. Uh, and it was basically, she needed a way to share all these documents with her clients. So she just created what's essentially kind of a, a nice custom post type system with a login uh, thing in there. And it was really just to work that out with her customers because it was a problem she had. Uh, and I think she said she ended up giving a talk or something and mentioning that in there. Uh, and everybody came up to her afterwards and just wanted to know about that. And she launched it into a product because, uh, you know, it was another problem everybody has. So I think, you know, it sounds like your story is pretty similar to that because I know all of us have problems with this with clients, uh, you know, and, and sometimes I think back to when I was first starting, it would be face-to-face -face meetings with clients where I got a note, notebook and I'm like writing down the URL and then what section of the thing and what we're talking about. And then going back to my office hours later and trying to decipher what all those things were. And it was a, I mean, it was a total nightmare. Or on the other side of it, you've got the, uh, the clients who uh, don't necessarily want to send emails. No, they want to, uh, they want to call and have mm. you sit in front of the screen as they go through the site and uh, and try to have you do live edits, which that doesn't happen. I mean, I'm sure it does, but it, it doesn't happen for this guy. Like, that's just yeah. a nightmare that uh, yeah, nobody has time for that. No. Yeah. yeah. How do you handle that when somebody calls? Uh, I point them in the direction of email is probably best. Um, however... Once I have uh, some sort of a uh, project, um, you know, project huddle, for example, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll I'll definitely point them in that direction. Um, I have one client right now who's like fairly. I mean, it's an older client, but there's uh, there's a new project manager or uh, marketing director um, at this uh, this particular location. And she just wants to do everything via phone. And it's just it. it it can't happen. Like it really can't. It's too much time out of the day. Um, even if, if she was to send an email that would cut that in half, but if, uh, if she were to, uh, to be able to go on, log in, click the, uh, the areas that she, uh, she wants changed or, you know, updated or whatever it may be. Um, I get that notification, go back in, make the changes. I mean, that's, that's just smooth. Sounds I think like that's... you just sold yourself on it. Oh no! Yeah, I, yeah no, it's it's going to happen. <laughs> I think that's I, the I... like the problem with calls and texts is, you know, people want that instant, direct, um, right away kind of stuff, which doesn't work for us. We're more we work asynchronously. You mm -hmm. know, we like, we you know, if it's Sunday night and you're at 
your daughter's recital, you don't want a text or a call from a client and you're not going to be able to help anyway. So I, that, that happened to me a few times with some clients and I would sort of build into my contract, like our communication lines and what we were using so that they knew like, and I would, of course I would never give up my phone number either, but um, that, that was something that wasn't helpful for either of us and it would just cause frustration because they wouldn't get a response. And um, so I think, at least for me, in my experience, like laying those things up front and talk and, and explaining how we're gonna communicate from the start worked really well. Uh, worked really well for my, for my experience. Yeah. What is it? Uh, if you give a Musa cookie or something, basically like, you know, it's it, a lot of it is, uh, is client education or, or client training, um, where as soon as you give an inch, they'll take a mile. I remember, you know, the first couple of years being in business that, uh, you know, I was amped and ready to take on any project I could possibly get. And with that excitement came, I'll answer emails late at night, I'll return calls, you know, and uh, once people started calling me around nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, like I, I had to retrain those people and not going in immediately uh, when the project started and laying out those ground rules made it really difficult to, uh, to kind of try to rein that back and say, no, like, I'm not going to answer your calls at 9:30 at night, you know. So setting that stuff up and, and setting up expectations in the beginning is is super important. I know Kyle's dealt with that in the uh, the very beginning as well. Still, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I'm still Kyle, dealing read, with that. You read a wasn't that book by Nathan Ingram that um, the Friendly Monsters book? Was yeah, that what it was yeah, called? yeah. Because he mentioned something about you know how you um, you, you want to be the hero, right? You want to you want to be the like. Inside, we want to be the guy that answers the call or the text and just fixes it. And oh, yeah, aren't we awesome? But you don't realize you're taking that time away from your family or taking that time away from improving your own business, um, serving other clients, whatever it would be. I think, I mean, I just have to plug that book because I, I yeah, I really mean, like you're taking people. time away from yourself, really. I mean, there, you need to be able to shut off, like a weekend day at least, you know, and just not do anything and then come back to, uh, to work refreshed. I mean, if you don't have that burnout, I think you end up really doing more harm in the end than, than good anyways, even though you think that kind of that over delivering mindset of I'm going to answer the call anytime, what that leads to in my experience, uh, 100% of the time is having some sort of resentment with the client. Um, because at some point, while the first phone call at nine o'clock at night was annoying, but you handled it. And then the text on Sunday morning, at some point you're just like, okay, I've had enough. But the client the entire time is just thinking, well, it's fine for me to do this. He always just jumps to whatever I say. So it's really not your client's fault for taking advantage of you. They're not doing it yes. maliciously. You've trained them to do that. And then eventually you become, you become extremely fed up with it. And then the relationship goes down the tube. So it, it's, it's not even self-serving to do that. You know, it's really not helping anyone. Yeah. And once you start trying to, to rein that back, like you're, you're potentially upsetting the client too, because like, why, why now are you not sudden. taking my calls? Why, like, why has this changed? Like, are we not friends anymore or, right. or something <laughs> like that? So yeah, it's it, setting stuff up in the beginning, man. Super important. I do want to touch a little bit on how I kind of see, um, I, I kind of see this, this tool, this project huddle tool of being able to do this visual feedback and clients having to interact with their site as kind of like this bridge between the client who wants nothing to do with the website other than they know they need one and the client who actually wants to get in there and do updates themselves. I, I find very few of my clients want to get in and do updates themselves, uh, but being able to get them at least invested enough to be able to provide this visual feedback on the website it helps kind of like educate them in that process. But I want to know a little bit first about how project huddle looked before it was its own product. How, how did it look when it was something you were just using for yourself? Yeah. How did it look? Um, I mean, look, not just necessarily in <laughs> the UI interface, but what was, what was it like when it first started? Well, it's, it's it was a work in progress. Right. We, when you when you build something, you have a specific idea in mind, and then when you test it out, um, you find out how clients use it, and more importantly, how they don't use it. Hmm. I think the biggest assumptions we make when we build products is that people are as tech savvy or as us, or we assume they have a certain amount of 
knowledge in the computer space. Common sense. Yeah. Yeah. We call it common sense, but right. I mean, I don't know how to fix my car. I don't know. Sure. Um, so I think originally it was more, it was harder for clients to use than anticipated, but that was something that I had some really good clients to help give me valuable feedback. We worked together to kind of build the tool. Um, and then as we launched it, um, had more customers in different use cases give very like valid and, and, and awesome feedback from the start. So um, sort of incrementally improving still to this day, but you know, at the start it was way less user friendly than, than it is now. Yeah, and so most of those changes, I think, when companies grow like this, come from that user feedback and how important it is to actually put something in the wild. So h- how long was it, you know, from, from the time you got the idea to do this, to use in your own agency, to when you decided, hey, this would be a, a great standalone product that I could sell? Well, it was kind of, um, from the start, I thought maybe this is something other people could use. Um so I just put it out there to see if other people would use it and they, and all of a sudden they did. So, um, I, you know, it's a really good question because I didn't anticipate doing that from the start, but, um, when, once I, I, I think I ran into a friend, he's like, yeah, you should put this out there and just see what people think. And like, do I charge for it? Do I put it for free? It's like, you know, if, if you charge for it, you're going to keep working on it. It's going to improve. If you do it for free, you'll probably get abandoned and, you know, you'll never do it again. So, um, went out, went out, put up a website. Sure enough, people started buying it and, and give, giving feedback on it. And some people really loved it. And I guess, I guess the rest is history. <laughs> right. Awesome. Is, it, is it your full-time work now? Yeah, it is. Um, so there's two of us and it's me and my wife. Um, so I'm more product focused and she's more on like marketing outreach and that kind of, that kind of thing. So, um, and then we use some contractors here and there to like fill in the gaps. Um, but yeah, it wasn't for a while. And I think that was sort of a, a good thing that we could. So I was balancing doing project cuddle with client work for a long time. I think that was super valuable because um, I, I, maybe it was Amazon that says you should eat your own dog food or whatever. Right. So, so, so like using it myself versus coming at it from the outside and trying to build a product for somebody that wasn't me was, was not going to work. So, I think it was super valuable to be able to do that. Yeah, that way you're not like relying on other people testing it for you. Um, you know, if you're using it uh, along the side, like the same time that you're developing it, you know, it's there's a bunch of use case uh, scenarios that you're finding yourself and fixing, I'm sure. For sure. Yeah, so I, I kind of mentioned a second ago how I think this kind of bridges the gap. And, and the way that I think this has been super useful for me, and it's something that Matt was mentioning too, is um, the client education part of them, them understanding how the website, you know, I, I have clients that don't understand how the website like links to different pages within the website, like that's beyond their comprehension. I think it's hilarious. Actually, I think it's maddening, but um, you know, it's just, it just doesn't interest them. They don't understand. And what's been really nice about kind of getting this built into my processes, it's, First of all, it's super simple for them to figure out how to do it. You just like point on the screen and then start typing. That, that's the that's all the training you need. Um, but it's kind of forced them to look at the website a different way um, and and kind of how uh, they're they're having to interact with it. They're seeing what it looks like if something changes. I think this stretches across uh, all forms of design. But you have customers that come up with an idea of something they want different. You didn't do it that way initially because you know it's a terrible idea. But until they can see how terrible that idea looks, it's very difficult for them to understand why you wouldn't just do it for them. And I think being able to have this this tool on the website, they can see how changes look, how things interact, is really helpful in kind of bridging that gap to getting them more invested in, uh, you know, a better understanding of what their website really is. Yeah, exactly. I think... Um... I don't know how many of your clients actually log into the WordPress admin and make changes themselves, but even though Gutenberg has made it a little bit easier, I, I still has see, <laughs> I mean, better than, better than the tiny MC that was there before, but still it's, you know, you log into the dashboard and I can, I can see people being like, this is absolutely insane. Like, what do I, I'm, I, it's, and it shouldn't be their job necessarily to learn things. No, not at all. So I, I, 
I, I like that um, they can sort of look at the front end of the site, request changes, you know, maybe swap out this image. They can upload an image and, and tell you to swap it out. Um, I, I know 99% of the clients I had just asked me to do changes just because they didn't have time to learn WordPress, learn mm -hmm. Gutenberg. I mean, even WordPress professionals had to learn how to use Gutenberg. You know, it's, it's, or how to install just, the classic editor like me. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So I, that, that's why I like about it. It simplifies the whole content changing experience and it, it makes it easier for you to provide as a service. Yeah. And I think customers, when they, when they start to understand this and have to be, uh, I don't know, having to interact with that. I, I, I don't know how to explain just the, the act of them having to like go do actions on their website, even though it's not getting in there and changing something in effect, it's, it, it kind of is for them. You know, they're, they're pointing at the place saying exactly what to change. It makes them so much more invested in the website. And I've just seen that throughout the builds that I've done is the customer starts having more buy-in to what I'm creating for them. And that's really important for us. And I think it's something we underestimate sometimes is I think a lot of people, uh, you know, new businesses will get a website because they know they have to have a website. And other than that, it, the power of it escapes them, right? So when we start being able to visually go over these things, show how these things interact and work together and really work out how all this is going to work on their site, they just start getting buy-in. And when they can start doing that, that's when we can start upselling things and creating better projects and all these kinds of things. So I think it's it's actually, it helps in more than just not having to look through a bunch of notes to try to understand what your client's doing. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's not an uncommon testimonial, I guess. You know, what, what would you rather do? Would you rather look at a website and type a bunch of notes on a piece of paper? Or would you rather just point, click and type? You know, it's it's like more pleasurable experience for 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 all of us, really. Yeah, um, and depending on uh, your clients, like, uh, you know, knowledge of websites and, and their vocabulary for them, you know, getting an email that says swap out this photo, you know, it could be a, a nightmare trying to figure out what exactly their their trying to to do or uh, or get across where just logging in seeing exactly which one they're they're referring to i mean it's it's a huge time saver yeah and i i i did warn matt slightly before we started this but i'm gonna have to call him out a little bit on this because i think it was when we were together uh i saw an email from one of his clients uh, a website project uh, and I think you can all picture what these emails look like. It's, it's a long body of text and uh, about every other line is in a different color or different font size or different weight. And then there's notes in between all of it. It looks like a ransom note, uh, but it's just <laughs> copy and pasted bits from their website and then their notes on what to change. And just seeing that gave me so much anxiety because it's been so long since I had to deal with one of those emails from a client. Like I did not want to go back to that place. Uh, and I didn't realize how, how important it's been to, you know, how these projects flow through my system until I saw that email and like felt myself go back to that place. So I hope that once you do uh, start using Project Huddle, uh, you will understand that feeling I had when I when I saw that. I have a feeling I will. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, and going back to the, just the the vocabulary part of it, um, I don't know if you noticed, but you know, the the above the fold section, they wanted uh, a few things like added to it, and the way that they were trying to describe it, like I I really didn't have any idea what uh, what they were referring to. I forget what exactly they were they were referring to it as i think it was something to do with um like above the scroll or something but yeah. like i mean sitting there for On a little the while screen, thinking I've about it you get before. it but you don't need to waste that time <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how I, I think I've been using Project Huddle for a little over a year now. It's got to be a year because I just uh, renewed. So um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about how it's evolved over time and what, what are some of the exciting things you've added to it uh, since you launched it? Yeah, it launched actually as a um, feedback tool on just images and um, like static designs because only because that's how I worked. I did everything in probably Photoshop at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I got feedback that way before building out a site. But then as, 
as almost the web evolved and, and as I evolved, I started doing more in the browser. Um, and so I wanted to add sort of like a website feedback tool to it. So it actually started off as only static images. Now it includes websites. So there's, it sort of covers, um, however you want to work. Some people love like just a, a side note. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about, do you get copy before you do the site? Do you get it sort of like after you have a design, you know, like sort of back and forth. What worked really well for me was having some sort of sketch or wireframe that says like, I'm in this section, this is what I want. Well, this is what we should talk about in this section. This is kind of stuff I'm looking for. Um, having that sort of like in a, a static mock-up is what we call them. Um, you can request those things in Project Huddle and kind of get that stuff before you begin a website build, which I think is like super valuable because otherwise you're either going with no copy at all or you're trying to design uh, like a giant page of copy that they sent that there's no possible way you could fit on one page, nor would you want to right. uh, type of situation. Hmm. Um, so, so that's why I like having both. Um, as it evolved, we sort of added um, like better ways for you to work. We have a sketch integration, which is super cool. Um, if you work in sketch, you can, um, from your sketch app, you can sync your designs right to a project. So you don't have to ever leave sketch to um, upload new versions and, and things like that. Um, and then we've also been trying to improve notifications quite a bit within Project Huddle. I know. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> we've had, and, and those are tough because, um, you know, with notifications, every client and person is different. Everybody works differently. Um, sometimes you need an immediate response to something. Sometimes mm -hmm. you don't. Um, certain conversations are relevant to specific people. So we've been rolling that out with sort of like um, sort of incremental improvements. So we have ways you can subscribe certain people to different conversations at this moment. We're beta testing sort of we're going to batch emails together. Um, in sort of digests, so they can either operate automatically, so like every five minutes, people get digests if there's things going on, um, and then you can manually send stuff too if you want with a personal note. So, um, just hearing how people work differently and how they communicate sort of help form some of these things as we're going forward, and hopefully that uh, beta should be out sometime next week. Awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited about that. I will say the my my biggest complaint with the entire system when I first started using it was the sheer volume of emails I was having to deal with. So um typically what I would do is is set up the entire website and then send it over to the customer and then they would put in 50 notes, right? And so all of a sudden my stress level would just rise every time I got the ding in my inbox that there was a new note. And some of them were just like, I like this smiley face. I'm like, shit, I don't need a freaking email for this. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, this is too many. I'm starting to freak out a little bit. And I think that's just probably my personality. Uh, but, and then as I was doing changes, my customer would be like, holy crap, I'm getting a ton of emails, you know? Yep. So I think that was my initial, uh, frustration with the platform and so what i ended up doing was just adapting my process to turning all the notifications off for the customers completely um i was still getting the emails i just set up a different email box that i don't have open all day so i would just check that when i need to and my frustration went down with that uh and then when i whenever i'd get done making like a round of changes so i would sit down with this project and do everything and then when i was done i would just email the customer um you know, personally and say, Hey, everything's been updated on the site, go take a look. And that worked fine. Uh, I think one of the suggestions I had was being able to batch them. So I'll just credit myself whether I was yeah, the that's, first one or that's not. That's totally fine. Um, but <laughs> I, I think this is going to, this is going to allow me to be able to turn all those back on for clients again, to where I can just set an interval that makes sense for me. I know I can get so many things done. They'll just get one or two emails instead of a hundred. Uh, so I'm super jazzed about that, uh, that upgrade. For sure. And, and, and at the moment, um, you know, because we have subscriptions for conversations, by default, you, your client doesn't get notified of anything unless you want them to. So you can sort of whitelist specific conversations to them. But I understand it's not a solution that works for everybody. So we're trying to give people as many different options to communicate as they want, because like I said, sometimes 
clients need to know things immediately and sometimes they don't. So yeah, better no, I'm, sh- I'm sure you're having to strike a balance. I was just trying to be really loud until yeah. I got what I wanted. No, that's, that's the way to improve it. And, <laughs> and that's how, that's how project Hell has worked from the start. You know, it's like I use it a specific way. It worked really well for me. You, you, you learn how other people use it and sort of adapt and, and really get to dig in and find out exactly where their pain points are and improve. So, um, that's something that's been a long time coming, but it's, it should be out next week. So we're pretty excited. Nice. So by the time people are listening to this, it's probably out. It's, it's now. probably out. Yes. So that, that is super awesome. I do want to say one bit of feedback, uh, that I've noticed since I first started with this and it makes sense now that, uh, you went to art school, the UI of the entire thing is absolutely beautiful and perfect and as minimalist as you can get away with. And I super appreciate that. Yeah. I, hey, I appreciate that too. It's, <laughs> you know, I, I think the hardest thing about designing is just having restraint and just taking away everything that's not absolutely necessary. And we always want to like start adding fancy things because we're like flexing our design muscles and the perfect designs are the ones where, you know, you take everything away until it, it no longer works, you know, and uh, everything in here is like beautifully minimalistic like that. Well, it's, it's done with a purpose. Um, Project Huddle is white label. So it's on your domain with your branding so it's re- it's representing you as a company. I think it needs to be professional, um, simple, easy to use, you know, but still have some powerful features at the same time. So I think it's it's one of the things that I, I think is like super valuable to have in a tool rather than something that totally mismatches your brand, not customizable at all. Right. Um, mm-hmm. it was yeah, and I think... Important. I think that's what makes it effective too, is not only is it easy for them to use, we were talking before we started recording the, uh, when I first started this, I I did like an onboarding video for my customer and like did a whole video explaining to them how to use it. And after doing that once or twice, I decided, no, I'm just going to make one generic video and send it to all my clients. And then I realized there's just this perfect little animation the first time they log in here and see project huddle installed on their site it's just a really simple animation that shows them click on this little plus sign click where you want type in what you want press okay uh and i'm like you know what that's that's pretty much the entire training that needs to be done uh so i think not only the the ui of it looking very simple just fits perfectly with the entire way the system works everything is very simple it's not overly complicated you could probably add about a million more features to this but unless they help support the cause of the product, it's really not necessary. And I think you've shown like really good restraint in making sure this stays easy to use. Well, we, we really want it to be client focused um, in, in the UI, obviously, um, but also just like making it easy to use. So um, a lot of times, like when, when I would work with clients, some, some clients wouldn't even have, I wouldn't even give them access to the, the WP admin just because I knew it, it was just opening up trouble. Um, so there's way, like we have uh, in Project Trouble, what's called a project access link. So it lets somebody leave these comments on a site, view the interface just by visiting a link. Once they visit that link, they're, they're remembered for 30 days or until they close out their browser. So it's super easy. They don't have to, they don't have additional logins. They don't have to go into the WP admin. For those specific clients, I think it works great. Um, of course, you can also enable it for people that have accounts, but I think you know, having those options because clients are different, it, re- it really matters. Yeah, and I've even took those project access links and then just created a pretty link out of them. So it'd be something nice and easy Perfect. for them to remember, you know, just, uh, you know, their domain slash whatever, their, their name or whatever, feedback or whatever. So it was just really easy for them to get to, uh, which is, you know, this this entire thing doesn't work if it's not easier for the client to do otherwise they're just not going to do it that's and that's something i that's a lesson i learned over and over when i was doing client work because i would use like Basecamp, and i was constantly switching project management systems and expecting my clients to be on there doing that and they just wouldn't do it you know and it's just a waste of money if if it's not going to work so that's why i like thinking about this from like what's the easiest thing you can do visit a link you're set to go done you know so 
Yeah, and I've, I've tried to work out my processes kind of in the same way. Basically, at the beginning of a web project build, uh, we're communicating via email and Google Docs. And uh, as quick as I can get to the Google Docs stage, that's where I'm trying to get to because we're putting content in there and I'm kind of helping coaching them through that content because Google Docs has such an amazing feedback uh, integration into it. Uh, it was, you know, why I wouldn't open a, a like, Microsoft Word, uh, because I can do all the client feedback right there in Google Docs. Um, and then once we move off of Google Docs, the the information, all the content is complete. Almost all of the communication from that point until we're getting ready to launch is just through the feedback system on the website. And if I can keep it to all of it being there, that makes everybody's life easier. For sure. Yeah. I, I mean, the stuff that Google has now, it's just insane too. I'm yeah. When I first started, it was just a shared drive or sending Microsoft Word documents. So that's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I dig that. Anyway, I can make all those things easier. So I, what I'll try to do is uh, uh, I'll remember after we publish this, I'll go through and record a video of how I have my entire starter site set up with Project Huddle already installed on my starter site, how I can clone that. What I actually have started to do is uh, force my customers to log into their website. So I will hide their website behind a coming soon screen with a login page. Uh, so once they log in, then they're logged also logged into uh, the feedback system so they can give their feedback in there, uh, but kind of trying to slowly train them to get into their websites. Uh, but I'll go through, uh, I think what I have now is really ironed out. I, I, I called or wrote Matt the other day and said like, okay, I got it. I figured it out. It was only after like messaging Andre 900 times and then apologizing for being an idiot. Uh, but I think I got a nice smooth little system now. So I will, uh, I'll make sure to record that and send that out to everybody. That'd be super helpful. I think having systems is just something I didn't do when I started and you just end up spending so much time monkeying around with dumb stuff that, and you just want to be building stuff for clients. So I think yeah. that would be super cool. I'd like to see that. Awesome. I will do it. Uh, 2019 has been the year of uh, processes for me. So we're, we're getting close to the end now. Hopefully I'll be done and I'll have an actual system that I can use. So Matt, what are you thinking, buddy? When are we going to get signed up? Oh, uh, real soon. Like real, real <laughs> soon. I, I'm imagining this, this episode will probably be out uh, a week or two from when we uh, launch or from when we're recording this on today's date, uh, but it's going to be very close to Black Friday. So what's uh, what's in store for Project Huddle and Black Friday? Yeah, we will have a Black Friday deal going on. Um, we're thinking like 30 or 40% off, nice. so it'll be a nice deep discount. Um, I think it's one of those things we, we, we like doing Black Friday stuff because it's like we, we it seems like people that try Project Huddle really love it and stay for like the long haul and really like to invest in it. So it's sort of an easy way for freelancers and small agencies to get in without breaking <laughs> the bank and, and seeing if it works out for them too. Yeah, just kind of dip your, your toe in the water with like very minimal investment and then realize, wow, the, the amount of time that I'm saving and how easy this is, I'm actually making money in the, uh, the end of the day. For sure. So I, I know I will put a link in the show notes here, but you can go to the adminbar.com forward slash project hyphen huddle and get to the website. But why don't you tell us a little bit before we wrap this up, how your, uh, your pricing structures work and what kind of plans you have available for folks. Yes. Yeah, so we have three plans. We try and make it really simple. Um, all like plans a theme here, really yeah, simple. Yeah. Like really, it. really simple. <laughs> Um, all plans get you unlimited websites, unlimited mockups. So um, the difference between the plans are the, the regular plan is sort of everything you need to get feedback from your, your sites and, and mockups. Um, the professional plan has some additional add-ons that maybe not everybody needs. So that, that would be you can um, get comments on PDF documents, which is great if you're like a, a print company or do print design. Um, and it also includes a file uploads add-on, which is great if you're doing like a website and a, and a client saying, here's the content document that we put together in. Or swap out this image. Or swap out this image or, or whatever, whatever it would be. Um, and additional add-ons, which will be added in the future is in the um, professional plan. We're working on a few right now. 
Um, and then we have an ultimate plan, which sort of gives you lifetime access to the to plug in and all the updates. And it's a really great way to like support Project Tuttle in the, and keep it going in the future. So will you be, uh, I, I, you probably hadn't ironed out all your Black Friday plans, but do you think you'll be extending those deals to all three of those plans? Yeah, we always do all three plans. Yep. Nice. Everybody loves a good lifetime deal. So if you're looking for a good lifetime deal, uh, me and Matt are putting together a top five list for each of us for Black Friday deals. And I don't want to give anything away, but I'm pretty sure Project Huddle is on the list. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I'll make sure to make sure we put all those details in there. So Matt, have I missed anything today that we uh, we needed to get to that you wanted to make sure we covered? No, I don't think so. Um, I I will mention that when you showed me around the uh, the back end of, of Project Huddle and and uh, you know how how it works on the front end of the website and all that stuff, um, the one thing that I didn't know that uh, after doing this show uh, that I do know now is that um, you can you can also proof PDFs and uh, and flat images, which I do a hefty amount of uh, of design work as well. I'm working on some labels for some supplement companies and stuff like that. And if I could send out those as well and get feedback on them, rather than you know the client uh, you know scanning in like the the proof document that I send and like handwriting like handwritten notes. notes. On them, I saw one which, of those in your inbox too. <laughs> oof, that's rough. Yeah, I mean some some of my clients I cannot read their handwriting, and it takes me ages just to figure out you know that we need to uh, to swap out the supplement facts, you know, or, or whatever. Um, so not only I was already sold, uh, beforehand, but now that I know that I can do that as well, like it's, this is a no brainer. I'm really excited. Well, yeah, awesome. give, it, give it a try. Come yeah. On. yeah. I know. We, we might, if we were set up, I'd just make you share your screen and put in your credit card details right now. But not all set it's up like <laughs> social pressure fails. I know. I'm just going to get everybody on and then pressure the hell out of them. Well, Andre, I do appreciate you jumping on with us. I will say, you know, um, there's the WordPress community in general is pretty awesome. And I think we can all agree to that. Uh, me and you just uh, have connected here recently within the last couple of months, but uh, this is one of the really, really good people in our ecosystem. He's been super responsive, super helpful. Uh, I think he really cares about this product and their users. And uh, I know with the roadmap they have and the, the investment he has into this product, it's one of those that you can feel confident about. So thank you for all you've done for uh, the community in a whole and the admin bar community. And I really appreciate you coming on here today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And thanks for saying that. It means a lot. Not a problem. I only say it when it's true. <laughs> All right. So as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to share the content, subscribe to our channel, or use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time, and it greatly helps support the show. That is all for now. We will catch you all inside the group. Bye-bye. Too late. The good news is there's a plethora of dumb things I say, so it's not like you don't have enough content. To yeah, he's got in. material to last. Yeah, for, you know, I've, I have an external episodes. hard drive that, that I keep <laughs> just for that. I think it's about a terabyte. <laughs>